Hello, I didn't see you there. Welcome back to the Empire of Dirt. I'm glad you dropped by, because I think it's time we had a little chat. You made it back after the introduction. Awesome. Okay, um, just so you know, no one's in trouble. We just need to have a little chat. So, I've had a bit of an epiphany. Um, and I think it's important that I share with everyone where we're going with all of this. I've been putting out videos once a week since roughly April last year. It's over 70 videos. Um, those videos, I think they average around about 15 minutes in runtime. Some are a little shorter, some are quite a bit longer. Um, and yeah, so there is quite a bit of footage of watching me hit my finger with armor and say, it's all right that. All of those videos, and anyone who does any YouTubing and then does it to a certain, you know, will be able to tell you that it does take quite a bit of time and effort in, in respect to the filming, the plan, the planning, the filming, the production, all of that, it does take time. I would surmise that to produce a 15 minute video, you're looking at six to eight hours of footage. You're looking at four to six hours of editing and production and sorting stuff out. So anywhere between uh, 10 and 15 hours have to go into producing 15 minutes of watchable, reasonable, entertainable footage. That's quite a lot of commitment and resource that you've got to put into this. Now, that isn't so much of a problem as long as there is a good reason and it's worth it. And I'm not talking about financial sort of, you know, because that's not what this is about. Does it look like it's about financial, you know? Um, oh, that reminds me, a word from our sponsors. No, can't do it. Anyway, what this is about is it's about me being able to, uh, I, I, I do this because I think that people, A, might find it useful, B, might find it entertaining, and that's me giving something back into whatever that is out there. You should be getting something out of it. I should be, that's how, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a thing here. It should be, you know. The epiphany came uh, with the last video I did, which was the, uh, the where uh, classic motorcycle disaster, whatever, I can't even remember the title of it. Um, it might not have been the last video that you saw, but it was the last one I filmed. Anyway, that basically saw me doing a, uh, a load of work on the Armstrong to get it ready for a 500 mile round trip. And what I ended up doing was nearly destroying the engine because I made a mistake. End of, I made a mistake. Now I've analyzed that, I've had a good think about it and I've, uh, the, the mistake is a mistake that anyone could have made, um, but I've got to look at it and say, why did I make that mistake? And the bottom line is because I really wasn't concentrating on what I was doing. I was filming it. And as anyone who does any of this will tell you, the resource, the time, yeah, all of those things, it all plays a part. And whilst you're trying to do stuff at the same time as filming, it takes extra time, it takes extra effort. And I was putting too much emphasis and too much time, and too much effort in filming it and making sure that we had content as opposed to actually fixing the damn bike. And that, that's what it comes down to. And I've realized that as a result, I could have basically made a very serious error 
because I was too busy playing around with cameras and everything else. Now, I that video finished where it finished and I did not film the rest of it because I ended up looking at it and saying, I can't film any more of this. I am not in the right place to do this. And I fixed the bike. I didn't make the national meet as I wanted to, um, which was what the round trip was for. I did take a nice trip up to Aberystwyth with them back on it. It did, I, it, the bike is fixed, it's all sorted. I've undone my idiocy and I've learnt. And not only have I learnt that you need to turn the page over in the manual, I've also learnt that you, there is a time and a place and you've got to have the right motivations for doing this. And going forward, that's what I'm aiming to do with a lot of these videos. I have been guilty of filming stuff for the sake of filming stuff to make sure that I've got that one video a week. And that's not how I'm going to do things going forward. I, I don't think it's fair on me. I don't think it's fair enough because you're going to get crap videos. So going forward, I've got to be a bit more strategic about things because there is a limited amount of me and resource because um, all this crew that I've got here. Yeah? No, just me. Um, there is only so much we can do in such a short space of time. And I got a lot of other stuff going on. You know, I, I work for a living. Um, there are people who depend on me for things and that's life, you know, that's, that's, that's how things are. Um, but it does mean that uh, this, this, this is a hobby and this is something that realistically I have to treat it as a hobby. And what it means is going forward, I, I am no longer planning on putting a video a week out. Now, I am not going to be putting things across like, you know, this isn't going to be a binky, right? It's not going to be a year between updates. Sorry, guys. I had to get it in somewhere. <laughs> um, this isn't going to be like that, the, it, the, but it is going to be uh, uh, more... Pla there are going to be gaps. There are going to be... But what you're going to get out of this, hopefully, if I do everything right and I plan and I get everything... Uh, I, I line all the ducks up first. Um, you'll get bigger, meatier, better produced. But it should all be... Uh, that's what I'm planning anyway. Uh, I think that putting the time and effort into producing quality as opposed to quantity is the way forward. And that's... The kind of the thing I wanted to get across, and I felt it was important one to one, mono a mono, etc., or whatever, to get that point over to you guys. Um, now, I've been asked a lot of questions, and I'm going to answer some of these questions. So, uh, you've got a bit more. This isn't just me sitting here and making the same video that loads of other YouTubers make every six months because they'd suffer from burnout. Um, I'm not burning out. I'm, you know, just saying that I'm not going to make things crap. I'm going to do things better. You're just not going to see it as often. I think that's what I'm saying, eh? Yeah, and you, you can, yeah, all right. You, you had to get you, you had to, you, you had to put your two pennies in, didn't you? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so questions. Now, I've been asked a lot of questions about the mini, which is there i don't know whether you can see you know i i, I what that is at the moment and it, it, it basically and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of history behind the mini i bought it in 2003 it came in here a month after i bought it so yes it's been in this building since 2003 now have a think about that that is in fact 20 years so i know i had a dig at binky but boys don't worry about it I like to think at the moment that it's on soak test, right? The body is, and the shell, I'm really happy with how it's come out. Um, and it's been sat there now since a year ago, February, which was the last time I did any work. And all this year, that's the bonnet, the doors and all that and everything else that I've stripped now. And it's currently semi-epoxied, semi-painted. And I'm really happy with the fact that it's been sat there 18 months and there is very, very little rust come through back on it and it's tiny tiny little but that's you know soak test now what will happen with it going forward is yes there will be 
a lot more, you know, there's going to be a lot more body work done. The reason I haven't sprayed it, in fact, apart from the fact that I, I did want to see how it fared out the way that I'd done it, because I'd never done it like that before. Um, the way that I did all that um, is I'm not sure about the engine. I've got a perfectly, I rebuilt the engine three, four years ago. However, I'm looking at other options and I'm going to leave that there. So, second question. You bought a lift. What make is the lift and why did you get it? Well, the lift is an Automac AS5500. It is movable. It is, you can move the damn thing around, etc., etc. It's quite low profile and it runs off the air compressor. So the air compressor drives a hydraulic pump, which obviously drives this. Now, the reason I got this lift is A, it was damn cheap. B, it was cheap. C, all right, that was it. It was cheap. Um, I also couldn't put uh, I, I couldn't put a fixed lift in here, um, and even though we've got three phase, uh, I didn't want to mess around with all that. This this gives me options. It's only a mid rise lift, um, and uh, I, I, I it, because of the amount of times that I've got stuff in and up and one thing or another, and it was also the fact that I could put this on it, I could put the mini on it, put the engine subframes in, etc. It makes things a lot easier. It's not a panacea because it is, uh, it's not a, an actual four poster or it isn't something that lifts. Um, it's not the type of thing you'd be able to do an exhaust, exhaust system on that type because the, there is restricted access. It's also only mid rise, so it's great for working on stuff at, at sort of chest height. But if you want to go up, it's again, you've got to go on your knees and what have you. But it makes things significantly easier, and I would recommend. Um, I don't, I can't remember how much they are now. I will put a link. Again, not sponsored. It's just a decent bit of kit. I bought a second hand off some guy in Chipping Norton. And yeah, and it's, 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 it's been brilliant. And because I know I've got a compressor, it runs perfectly as well. You just plug it in. Uh, it is slow, don't get me wrong, but it will lift my truck, which is two ton. Um, it's supposed to be good for two and a half. You know, um, uh, uh, you know, and it does stop people complaining that I'm not using axle stands or I'm using the wrong jack or I'm using the wrong jacking point, etc., etc. By the way, there are always axle stands there. There were always axle stands there. You just probably couldn't see them. Anyway, um, so that's the lift. Um, I'd just also like to point out it is not a wildfire lift. Question number three. What cameras do you use? Well, that's a, uh, an interesting question, I suppose. Um, cameras I use are not the cameras I want to use, put it that way. However, you got what you got. I'm currently using, uh, and I'm, this is, a, that's the Sony um, A5000 uh, mirrorless compact camera with the standard kit lens on it. And overall, as long as the light is good, they give excellent, and I've got two. I've got an NEX5, and I've got that one, which can give me, you know. Um, they would be pretty good. That one films in 4K, the NEX5 doesn't, but it does film in a fairly good high resolution. Um, that gives, uh, you've got a lot of control over the light, you've got a control over everything, but that has a fatal flaw in that it is constantly overheating. Um, to the point where I, I, I've come this close to th throwing it across the room many, many, many times. So I wouldn't recommend that you go down that route. Um, I bought these because, or I have these because I've always used Sony SLRs and SLTs. And my big A77, which would be a really good camera for doing this type of thing, because I spent so much money on it back when I bought it, I scared the death of bringing it up here. So I bought these second hand and regretted it ever since. So. Um, that's something that's got to change, but again, this is a hobby. Other than that, there are GoPros. Um, I had some, I have my GoPros are Hero 5s, they're nothing fancy. They have their good points and their bad points. Quality of um, footage, excellent. The sound, terrible. Uh, same with the sound off that camera as well, which is why we use 
which is why we use these. Would I use something different? I'd probably look at some of the newer solutions like that Insta Mini thing, 360, what have you. But again, you've got what you've got. I bought them a number of years ago. Now it's a five, for God's sake, it's ancient. And it does do 4K after you hack the software and do something else to it. But I, I've been happy with that. Not planning to change that anytime soon because that's, again, what we've got. The other thing I do a lot of is my, my Paco phone, which is, again, four or five years old, but it films in 4K. And you can get away with doing a bit, you know, I've got a, a, a DJI gimbal, which stabilizes it out a bit, which you'll see me shouting at the damn thing because it does occasionally. But again, that's all it is. So we've got a mobile phone, two ancient GoPros, and two really bad Sony cameras. It's up to you whether you think it's any good. But that's what I got, that's what he was. I'm not planning on changing anything, although if that thing sets itself down again, we're gonna have words. Um, question four. When did you last cut your hair and what shampoo and conditioner do you use? Okay, I'll bite. It was November 2019. It was the November before the first COVID lockdown. I decided that because we couldn't get a haircut, I was, I'd always wanted to grow it longer. And I did, and to be honest with you, it's just stayed with me. Um, being of the age that I am, I'm desperately trying to hold on to what hair I've got left. And I think that it's more a midlife haircut crisis kind of thing than anything else. But, you know, I, I might change my mind one morning, I might get up and say, bugger it and shave it all off, who knows? In terms of shampoo and conditioner, I use that German caffeine shampoo, the Alpacin, I don't know, it's the one that comes in, it's blue. I also got the Tunin one that does put a bit of colour back in because, yeah. I do oil as well, especially with a beard, you've got to oil a beard, because otherwise the beard goes all sort of, you know, and I do trail, you know. Uh, conditioner, no, no, um, EP80, that's, that's, that's what I usually use on it. Question number five. What is next? Now, I have a number of very large projects coming up. There's a lot of things happening. And it's good that, like I said, I, 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 I'm going to be focusing on quality going forward. Um, there's a few things that have got to be done that have to be done first. And I will be filming them because I think that they, they, they're important. The first thing that's got to happen in the immediate future is that thing by there. That is a Cibora <coughs> Tigstar 16P. I need to teach myself how to TIG weld, and there's a reason for me doing the TIG welding. That's because I need to do some pipe work, but that's something that's in the future. Um, I've been told that uh, this TIG welder here is mostly working. So I am going to start putting this thing back together. I've got to get a bottle of argon. I've got to get some fillers. I've got to, because I want to do aluminium and I want to do stainless. Uh, and we're going to have a crack at TIG welding. Uh, I think I know that the fan's broken in it, but so yeah, that's probably going to be the next sort of thing that I do here is to um, get that working. And I think that that's actually going to be pretty cool to do. And I'm looking forward to doing that because I've always wanted to take well. Um, I just realised I don't know where the foot switch is for it. So in conclusion, uh, what you've got to take from this uh, this 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 little aside, this little tete-a-tete, -tete, is that going forward, we're not going to be making a, uh, a video a week. or uh, So every Sunday night, there won't necessarily be something coming out. I'm hoping that what that means is I can focus a bit more on making it better um, in terms of production, in terms of planning, and make sure that it's, more, that it's worth something for myself and for everyone else who watches it. It's gotta be for myself, it's gotta be worth more for myself. I have to get something out of it myself. 
and make sure that I'm learning something and make sure that I'm, I'm taking myself forward. And hopefully sharing that with you guys is going to be a better experience for you as well. I, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. So as it's really late now, I, I need to go put another log on the fire and they're all out there. So I need to go and chop that up and stick it yeah. uh, Whilst I've got you here, right, uh, if you're not already subscribed, and I know that 95% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. I know, mind blown, eh? I, I, I don't get it either, you know? But that's what the, 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 the YouTube thing says to me, is that only 95%, only 5%, I should say, of you who watch these are actually subscribed. So, you know, do us a favor. Click the button because then you can find out when I do do it. And it's going to be more important now because it's not going to be every week. So if you click the button, you'll know when I'm doing stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, that, you know, subscribe. Tell your friends, you know, I'll take the thing. Leave a like. If you've got any comments or any questions or anything else, stick them in the thing down there because, you know, then I haven't got to stick stuff on paper. It's, you know... Anyway, I'm going to get back to my light reading now and... Uh, Crack on with things. You stay safe and have a nice day. It's all right, Dad.